Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 38 and today we are returning with two big games of our Tigers in the Premier League and the Champions League as we play host to both West Ham and Monaco. Before we play this games though, I can show you how whole have been getting on off camera. So of course in the last episode you saw our very very impressive back-to-back -back victories over Dortmund and Manchester United and following that I've played several games off camera and we've been on a really good unbeaten run as well. We started off with a very surprising 3-1 victory over Liverpool in the EFL Cup third round where Rogerio netted a hat-trick. That was unbelievable as uh, we surprised ourselves to get through to the fourth round. Uh, we then beat Watford by three goals to two away at Vicarage Road and then drew 0-0 with Fenerbahce away in Turkey, then a 1-1 draw at home to Norwich as well, then a 1-0 victory away against Leicester, then an unbelievable thrilling 3-3 free -free draw away in France against Monaco. There were four goals, uh, sorry, five goals even, inside 12 minutes. It was unbelievable and uh, the game did finish as a 3-3 free -free draw. It's one of those games where I thought to myself, God, I wish I played this one on camera because everyone would love to have seen it and, uh, and, and my reactions when we conceded directly after taking the lead on two separate occasions was quite funny. But um, anyway, uh, after that, we beat West Brom by a goal to nil. And in our last game was a thumping 5-1 victory away at London Road against the Posh, which puts us into the EFL Cup quarterfinal. We'll be taking on Brentford, a championship side. So we might be going through to our first ever Cup semi-final if we can beat Brentford, and that'll be amazing. So in today's episode, games against West Ham and Monaco. And as you can see right now, this is how we're doing in both the league and the Champions League. In the Premier League right now, we're sitting in third place with 21 points picked up from 10 games, 5 points behind the early pace setters Arsenal who have 26 points. Sunderland by the way, what a start for them. 22 points, 10 games played, 7 wins already. David Moyes is a mastermind. I mean, seriously, it's unbelievable what work he's doing with Sunderland right now. It's incredible. And uh, in the Champions League as well, we're top of the group two with five points. But I said this is going to be a tough group. And as you can see, it certainly is shaping up that way. Where are we? Group E, aren't we? Uh, yeah, there we are. It certainly is... Can I not just... Can I just click it? That's quite annoying. But it's, it's shaping up to be quite difficult anyway, this uh, this group. Very, very tough indeed. And, uh, and as things stand right now, it's anyone's guess as to who's going through. Right now, we are top. We are uh, one of two teams that are undefeated. But honestly, three points separating four positions. Yeah, it's 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 going to be very, very close to see which team makes it through and uh, which teams go out. But uh, still, first games in the league, though, as we take on 19th place West Ham. And I'm hopeful we'll be getting a win in the first game of today's episode. Uh, on the injury report right now, by the way, quite a few injuries to deal with. Uh, Ross Barkley is currently injured right now, coming back from a torn ankle. Uh, Raj is currently injured as well. Mitrovic broke his toe, so he's also injured too. And so is Brian Malonaz as well. Four injuries and struggling a little bit for numbers. And uh, hopefully today we'll come through and get the wins in both games, despite being a little bit short-handed. So this is team for the game. Then Pena starts in goal. Back for a time and Dean Wassonogo and Torre in midfield. And Dye and Blint further forward. Libby on left. Leko on the right. And Saeed is our advanced playmaker. Don Lee leads the line. And on the bench, Manny and Keane. Walker Peters, Balut, Oscan, Delefe, Rogerio. First game, West Ham at home. Let's get a win. Come on, home. Uh, for the Monaco game, by the way, both Ndai and Daily Blint are suspended, hence why they start together as our CM duo. I always like to play the situation the best I can, because obviously right now I'd much prefer to play Kirkpatrick through the middle, and uh, and also Saidi playing deep line playmaker with Ozcan as our attacking midfielder, and he himself, by the way, has been in unbelievable form uh, of late in the rare chances he's got. But if we're going to see Ndai and Blint suspended for the Monaco game in a few days' time, they may as well start this game and we can rest the two players that will start that game and they'll be fully fit for it because it just makes sense, right? So you always got to play the situation and that's the way I look at things. Not just always select your best team out there game after game, hope for the best. Always play the situation and the run of games to come. Anyway, first uh, first, high, uh, first highlight of the game and it comes to Hull City as Time wins it back but then dispossesses, uh, dispossesses the ball. He gives the ball away and we're standing it back and then Time wins it back again. Josh Timon loves giving the ball away and winning it back as Daly Blint sends it long towards Olivier down left hand side Donnelly is in the middle can he find him yes he can and Brian Donnelly gives us the lead just nine minutes in it's already 13 goals for the season Olivier's been on fire as well this year what a start for the Tigers already one goal to the good 
I absolutely love that wing play. I really, really do. Olivier and Leco have been sensational this season. We score so many goals from crosses. It's unbelievable. And Donnelly is not a tall lad. He can't jump for Toffee, but he still scores so many goals, not just with his feet when the cross come in as well, but also his head. Because despite the fact his jumping reach is really poor, his heading is really decent. So I, I always feel confident when the ball goes in the box. If Donnelly's unmarked, he'll tuck the ball away. 1-0 hole, great start. Now let's see if we can get a second as Donnelly wins the ball again in the air and finds Jonathan Lecco, but he loses out to Rudy and West Ham get it back. Quite a few turnovers in possession to start this game off then as Gonzalez finds Ronaldo Vieira and Vieira still on the ball, tackled by Undyne again. We win it back as Olivier goes down left-hand side, running to number 20 and takes it around him. Sensational stuff from the Belgian. It's still Olivier. Oh, what a run. What a run and what a cross and what a goal. What a goal. It's a carbon copy. Olivier down the left to Donnelly. 2-0 to Hull. That was sensational from the Belgian. Oh, I was like Ryan Giggs in his prime, skinning defenders and putting them on their heels. Lovely, lovely cross by Olivier once again. And there is Donnelly inside the six-yard box who heads it home. 2-0 to the Tigers. What a fantastic assist once more. And I don't want to jinx things, but already we are looking the real deal today. And this should be the three points in the bag, I'm sure, because we are playing so well. But I am the king of jinxing things, so who's ready for a whole collapse as Raheem Sterling gets on the ball down the left-hand side. Chips over to top of Sonogo and finds Gonzalez. And Gonzalez on the ball. Wow, that was terrible. Thank God for that. Oh, great chance here for West Ham to get back in the game. And they had a free kick there, which was floated to the man at the far post. He headed the ball over the bar, unmarked. And uh, I, I cannot believe how bad our marking was there. We just left the guy totally unmarked there. We should have at least hit the target. Still, we're up by two goals at the break and playing well. And as things stand right now, three points in the bag, bar a collapse. So first highlight of the second half, and it comes 72 minutes in. As Walker Peters on the bench goes down left-hand side and crosses. And it's cleared away, but Saidi heads in the rebound as we go three goals up. And Saidi's changed his hairstyle again. He, he proves he had like a, a shaved head. And now he's growing it back again. Still, 3-0 to hole. That's all I care about. The haircut doesn't affect his heading ability as uh, as we extend our lead. And uh, that was <laughs> that was really poor goalkeeping from Ron Reverse-Zieler there. The we, uh, German didn't do too well there. And uh, we're now three goals to the good, and, and, and that will surely do it. Now, we've been in control from the first minute, really. Uh, but there is a highlight here. And can West Ham get a consolation goal? As Tielemans plays it back to Rudy, now through towards Barcock. Out wide towards Raheem Sterling, and Sterling on the ball, takes it around Walker-Peters and does well there, and then totally messes it up. What on earth was that? So that should do it for the game then. We are going to win by three goals to nil. A resounding, comfortable victory to start off today's episode, and good confidence as well, going into the big clash against Monaco. Another win in the league. We've been in very fine form this season. We did have a little bit of an early struggle, but other than that, we've been playing very, very well indeed. And I'm going to passionately say at full time, I'm very pleased with the result and your performance. And most players are very, very happy. The squad of morale, by the way, right now is really, really good. I think Donnelly is the only player that's a little bit unhappy with me as he's uh, being touted right now by, I think it's City or possibly Chelsea. But of course, we're not letting him go. He's on an eight-year contract now. He's going nowhere. But uh, everyone else is fine and, uh, and good to get another win there. And oh, as well, speaking of contracts, I think I forgot to show you. In fact, I'm sure I did. That we just given a new one uh, to our French centre half Sonogo who did have three and a half years left in his deal we're giving him a new five-year deal though 85 grand a week I think he's our top earner now Mamadou Sonogo and of course it's the uh, the eight-year contract with an optional contract extension by the club as well so Sonogo like our other Wonder Kids are going nowhere we're we're Wonder Kid FC we can't sell them now we've already changed the name and got the t-shirts printed all right then, guys, so second and final game today as we take on Monaco in a massive game in the fourth Champions League group stage game in what so far has been a very tight affair in Group E. A win in this game will take us up to eight points in the group, which would be fantastic, but I just don't want us to lose and drop out of the top two. So I'll be fine with a draw in this game, but a win would, of course, be magical. So this is the team for the game then. Uh, is, is Raj okay to play? I think he might be. Oh, I don't want to risk it. I never like to play players that have that orange injury sign. So we'll leave him for the time being and put our faith in Pena. So this team for the game then, uh, Inyaki Pena in goal, are back for a time and Dean of Keane and Torre in midfield, Kirkpatrick and Saidi. On the left-hand side, Olivier. On the right-hand side, Delefeu. And Ozcan does indeed get his start as our advanced playmaker. 
playmaker. Donnelly leads the line. And on the bench, Mannion, Sonogo, Walker Peters, Balut, Ibe, Leco, and Rogerio. We could have Malonas on the bench, but who do we take out? Uh, maybe take out Jordan I for Malonas or just leave as is. Uh, I'll take out I for Malonas. And, uh, and we shall go with that lineup. So really thin on the ground right now. Our squad is quite small. And uh, you see in the problems, we have a little bit of an injury crisis. Well, a little bit of an injury crisis, not a big one. But uh, still, uh, second game today, it's Monaco. It's at home. And this is a big, big game. So come on, whole City. Let's get these three points. Continue our good run of form and try and pull away in this very tight group. So first highlight of the game, and it might come to us as Torre heads it through towards Donnelly, running out defenders and trying to take them all on, it seems. And then goes for goal, but fires it wide. He scored a couple of really nice goals off camera this season, like taking around two or three players and then sliding it home. But sometimes he takes the shot on far too early. He's got the pace to keep on going forward, but sometimes pulls the trigger far too early for my liking. I, uh, I need to find a couple of traits to give to Donnelly, because so far he's got no traits at all. And um, I'll have to see which one I want to give him, which could make him more lethal. Still, second highlight. And once again, it seems to come to hold. Once again, Saidi finding Donnelly back towards Dimov. And we shall try and pass our way through the Monaco defence as the Bulgarian is forced back to Kirkpatrick. Now Olivier down the left-hand side. Through towards Oscan, gives it away. Where's his highlight going? To Monaco, it seems, as Bailey releases John Guidetti, who is through, and the Swede is denied by Payne. A really good save by the Spanish shot stopper there on loan from Barcelona, stopping Guidetti from giving Monaco an early lead. They breached our back line there, and I have to say, always oh, read about hits it wide. In the first game against Monaco, away in the south of France, we saw them get in behind our defensive line a couple of times and had to drop it deeper in the second half to make sure they wouldn't score again. I might do that straight away right now. Drop deeper and prevent them from uh, from getting in behind due to their rapid pace. But it's Donnelly on the break. Vol City keeps on going. Good run by Brian. Great run by Brian. Menu makes the tackle, but it will drop to Delafoe. Can we get a chance to possibly go in front? Is timing down left-hand side. Has space to cross if he wants to. And does head a clear. Saidi heads it back in. Mendy heads clear. It'll come to Ozcan. Back towards Kirkpatrick as we try and break him down. Timing down left hand side. Good first touch. Crosses to the middle. Delafoe heads off the bar and it's cleared. And Monaco get it away. What a chance to go in front. And the Spaniard is the woodwork. Come on. And yet another highlight as Edison launched it long and Guidetti loses out to Kirkpatrick. And there is the Scott winning it back. Well done. As Saidi finds Delafoe. Can we get a clear cut chance in this first half? Well, we yet to break them down fully. Donnelly on the ball, running at defenders, keeps on going, and again, pulls the trigger far too early. We've got work the ball into the box on. I don't like shooting from range, unless it's one of my long range specialists. Donnelly keeps on pulling the trigger far too early. He's got the pace. Go round them. Don't just shoot straight away. And another highlight before the break, it seems. And this time for Monaco. What an action back first half. Leon Bailey on the ball. Tackled by time and well done. Can we get one clear cut chance before the break? Come on. Delafoe down the right into Ozcan. And Ozcan gets past one. Keeps on going. Keeps on going. Tackled by Reed Vowd. And that should be Orbel Michael Keane. Well done. Dear, oh dear. This is... Mad, the highlight seems to happen like far earlier than they should, you know. So I run out of breath before the chance actually happens. That will teach me for never shutting up as Saidi gets on the ball and takes it over the halfway line, finds Delafay through towards Donnelly. Donnelly on the ball, plays it through to Oscan. Great chance here. Oscan surely tackled Olivier, surely off the post. Oh, Willie, what a chance, mate. Hits the woodwork. That should have been 1 0. Another highlight, Delafoe's free kick to the back stick, Keane can't win the header, and Oscan's taken down, it seems, no, well, he gets to the ball first anyway, so that's okay with me, and we keep the chance alive, possibly, cross to the middle, there's Donnelly, great first touch, and a second touch, it's the bar after the shot, oh my word, 18 shots, but only four on target, we can't hit the back of the net. And a highlight for Monica here, was just over a quarter of an hour to go, but thankfully, Payne, you managed to catch the cross easily. And launched it long for Donnelly to chase after. Xhaka gets there, but Delafoe gets the loose ball first. Come on, mate. You've got so much pace, Gerard. Keep on going. Keep on going. Well done. Donnelly's in the box. Can you pick him out? Yes, you can. Oh, it's off the post. I don't believe it's at the third time we've hit the woodwork in this game. Donnelly crosses. Reed Val gets it clear. So many opportunities. I cannot believe this is still nil-nil. And yet another highlight. And this time, it looks as though it will come to Monaco as Edison receives the back pass. And I think he's probably going to launch it out wide towards Nacho, which he does. Heads it through towards Granite Xhaka. If Monaco go on to win this game, they've not played badly or anything. But the amount of missed chances we've had and Kirkpatrick's off. God damn it. Second yellow card for Willie. We've already got suspension problems and injury problems. Another one adds to the list as well. This is not good. 
And any chance of possibly winning the game is surely gone now. I'm going to take off Donnelly, who's missed so many chances for Rogerio. Have him as a target man to attack. And hopefully our... Uh, actually, let's change the instructions too to float it crosses. And, uh, I mean, you know, we could still win with 10 men, but I think now if anyone's going to win it, it's going to be Monaco. And if they do win it, this will be a massive loss. However, highlight for Hull. Brian Malone has on the ball and a Canadian finds Delefeu. And Gerard out wide towards Timon. Ruggiero is six foot six. So float the ball into the box if you can. Glick heads it clear. It'll drop to Saidi though. Shoot. Oh, get in. Saidi, what a finish. And Hull going in front with nine minutes to go. Oh, Saidi, back to back goals. Oh, the, the weak foot took away so many attributes or so many point of attributes. And it was all worth it. It was all worth it. He's not scoring goals with left foots, but I don't care. It makes him so much more better. Now he's got a reasonable left foot, but that's with the right foot. What a cannon. 1-0 hole. And now can we see out these three points? Come on, let's not throw this away, lads. Seriously, Bittencourt on the ball for Monaco. And um, Bittencourt into Camacho. Fabinho now on the ball. And the Brazilian looking for a teammate. Possibly shooting. Puts it over the bar. I'm fine with that. Come on, lads. Come on, come on, come on. We are almost there. Dimov heads clear the corner, and Rogerio is first to the loose ball. I am really liking this striker, man. I really, really am. As right on cue, he loses the ball. Oh, God, no. You are joking. You are joking. Oh, Pena. What a save by Pena. Am I glad I loaned him in? Big, big, big decision paying off since we got uh, Radcliffe injured right now. A really important save, and he might be set for his second clean sheet, or possibly third clean sheet already this season. As we're hanging on in there, Bruno Fernandes on the ball, shooting, and it's gone behind for a corner. Referee, where is that final whistle? Come on, everyone wants to get in for the news. This has got to be the final whistle. Come on, why is Ruggieri not defending these corners? Saidi puts it behind. Ref, where is that final whistle? Come on, we're past the two minutes now. Bittencourt floats it in. Lecco heads clear. And that will do it. Get in. What a win for Hull City. Ten men, but no problem. We get the job done. I am passionately going to say a very nice victory. Well done. Only three players are delighted and, and, and stuff. That's not good. Though I'm going to calmly say to uh, Kirkpatrick, I'm disappointed for you getting sent off and he's fired up, which is good. And also Donnelly hit the post. I think it was twice in this game. And I'm going to say he let, he let himself down in this one as well. Olivier didn't play good either. So I'm pleased we got the win and everything, but uh, I'm still going to be uh, criticising a few players. And we'll leave it at that. So one of the final score, eight points picked up from four. Delighted with that. And, uh, and Kirkpatrick now out for the uh, for the next European game as well. And that means now in the group, we are currently topped by three points, four points clear of Dortmund as well. And I think that means too, if we draw our next game, then we guarantee a place in knockout rounds. I think. I think. I'm not too sure. I think it does. That will give us nine. And due to those teams needing to play each other as well, I think that will probably do it. But I'm not too sure, so don't quote me on that. But still, a big win regardless. And we are now the only undefeated team in the Champions League group stages. So that will end today's episode of the Football Manager Series, guys. So a big fan of watching. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Our very good run continues. We shall return in the next episode with games against... Oh, that's a good double right there. Let's play our final Champions League game on camera against Fenerbahce. But before that, a game against City. And we keep on winning at home on camera right now. So let's keep the home streak games going. So City in the next game. And then Fenerbahce in the double in the next episode. And I'll see you for that one very soon. So thank you for watching, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode in our Football Manager series. Featuring the final Champions League group stage game very soon. Bye.